Good morning, afternoon, venin. Everybody, my name is Mike at Filmboy24, and we're at it again. This film was shot presumably about 40 years ago. I don't know by who. I don't know what's on it. Today, hopefully, we're going to find out together. So what's this all about? Well, this is a little sort of an episodic video series that I put together a couple months ago or a few months ago where I'll take an old roll of film that I've acquired sometime in the last couple of years through various, I don't know, I bought some on eBay or I bought a camera and there was a roll of film in it or there was some exposed film in the bag or whatever. However, I received a roll of film that is completely exposed front to back and I don't know what's on it. Hopefully we're going to find out here together. If you watched the last couple of episodes of this type of video, you now know that doesn't always work out the way I hope. I will show you the results regardless of what they are, unless they are wildly inappropriate. So in other words, if I get no image, I'll just show you the no image. It'll be very quick. Uh, if I get an image, a good image or a decent image, we'll see the whole thing. So this particular role is Ektachrome Type G E160. It's a very old, this film uh, was in a box when I had gotten it originally, and I usually write uh, on a piece of tape and put it on the top of it. It was in a box, it expired, or had a use by date, I don't know what they call it, expiration date of 6, 1980. So this film was probably shot, I'm guessing, late 70s, I doubt early 80s because most of the time people would buy this film and then they would just shoot it. So my guess is sometime in late 70s, 78, 79, you can uh, decide hopefully later on in the video when I show you the results or lack thereof. It was, it hailed from, hold on, stay with me. I want to say Greendale, Indiana. I don't remember exactly. I, I, it's very difficult to read my writing. Either Greendale, Indiana, or, I don't know, Grindale? I, I can't tell. So if you know that area of Indiana, I have family in Indiana. I've never heard of it, but somewhere in Indiana. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that very loud Lomo UPB1A. It's set up for two rolls of 16 millimeter right now, but I'll change that in just a minute. I'm going to load it up in that dark room bathroom. Uh, and then I'm going to take it into that dark room area, the developing room called my kitchen, and I'm going to process it. Uh, before I get into too much of that, I want to say thank you to everybody so far that has subscribed to my channel. I say it, I know every video, I am just... <sighs> that there's 800 people up to right now that care enough to want to see this ugly mug do this kind of stuff on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I've been super busy lately. I haven't been able to shoot a whole lot of film in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a new friend of mine, you know who you are, sent me a ton of film, just under 10,000 feet of film to transfer, and I did that all of last week. I have another little project I'm working on, some developing and transferring, uh, and I've had a lot going on in my personal life lately. Um, if you don't know, I do have two children and a wife, and I have full-time responsibilities, so I do my best to get a couple videos out a week. Doesn't always work that way, so please bear with me. On that note, with my new friend that I scanned all that film for, he has a Bolex Reflex H16, similar to mine, and it's missing a part. Now, I'm trying to help him a little bit to source a part, I realize that we could probably go online and purchase a parts Bolex camera and harvest. But we're trying to find the speed control dial on the side of the Bolex. If anyone out there knows or has an extra one or knows a source for just the part itself, the shaft is there. You can actually, you know, with pliers or needle nose, turn the speed dial, speed control dial. But we're looking for the actual dial itself. If you have one, let me know. I'll make sure he knows, and maybe we can marry the dial with my buddy. One last thing, Father's Day. I hope you all had a great Father's Day, all you wonderful fathers out there. I know I did. My girls, 
got me a brand spanking new. It's digital. Shh, don't tell anyone. I do need a new camera to shoot these videos. A Canon M50. Still got that new car smell. <sighs> Stay tuned. As soon as I learn how to use it, we're going to shoot some videos with it and maybe up the quality a little bit. Right now I use my Canon T2i 1080 and it's very old technology as far as digital goes and we're trying to up it just a little bit. So with that, I'm going to go in and load this tank. The next time you see me, it'll be loaded up and ready to go. Well, it's loaded, but that's about the only positive thing I can say. <laughs> You know, what is the old law? If something can go wrong, it will. Well, I started, I did the old break the uh, spindle thing in the back and started pulling the film and about this much of it came out and it snapped, snapped off inside. So I've only had to do this twice, but occasionally it happens. Let me tell you how terrible this loading session went. So I had to break open this cart all in the dark. And again, I've only had to do this one other time, so I'm not overly familiar with it. Pop the film out, and the film sort of went everywhere. So I decide I'm just gonna spool the film on without putting it on a reel first, a little 50 foot reel, which I, maybe that was a So the film's everywhere. It's probably gonna have scratches on it and whatnot. It is loaded, and it seems to be loaded fine. And I'm going. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going crazy in there. I'm trying to, uh, you know, orient and get the film on properly. And I turn and I hit the little table that I put the base of this tank, not the lid, but the bottom. And it fell off the table onto my tile floor into the bathroom. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with these are those Bakelite 1970s tanks that don't usually hold up too well under impact. I haven't really looked at it. I was in the dark, film everywhere. I couldn't open the door or turn on the light to check it out. I just went with it. I felt it. I didn't feel any cracks. Seems okay. And then one other thing, while I was loading this film that was everywhere, all over the floor, unspooling and very, very tightly curled and was, yeah, stuck everywhere, I forgot I had my watch on. It's a little Apple watch and I raised my hand up at one point and it went on and it lit up and probably exposed a little bit of the film. So, you know, you might want to stay tuned and see what happens when we process this. <laughs> Your guess is twice as good as mine, so we'll see. I'm going to throw a little montage up. It is canned. I now use PhotoFlow in the end, and it just shows sort of my process. If you don't want to watch it again because I put it on every episode, then just fast forward through it and get to the good stuff. So, I'm going to take it in there, develop. I'll see you in just a few seconds or less. Well, after all of this and all of the mishaps, we actually got an image. It's not great, but it's an image. And I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Kind of disheartening that we are the only ones that were ever able to enjoy this. But at least some people get to enjoy it now. Uh, You'll know what I mean in a second. Um, it's the 
typical kind of footage that uh, I usually get. And uh, before I show it really quick, if you like this kind of video and this kind of goofiness, I don't know why my wife does, do me a favor really quick before I show the video, just punch that like button for me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And if you feel like subscribing, why don't you do that too? Then you can keep up with the ridiculousness that is Filmboy24. So let's get to, uh, again, the results don't expect the world. For what I had to go through to get these results, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, here they are. No surprise what that footage is. Again, I wish it uh, would have come out a little bit better, a little clearer, a little sharper. Did the best I could. 40-year-old uh, film, probably late 70s, right around when my father and stepmother got married. Uh, they were married in 78, by the way. So it brings back some memories, and I wish that the people, or at least someone in that wedding party, was able to view it. However, they're not. The film itself, it did a couple of little funky things. For one, it, it, there's no real sharpness to it. It's not overly unusual for 40-year-old film that was shot 40 years ago. Uh, I'd like it to be a little more crisp, a little sharper. Didn't really happen. I also had some emulsion bubble. We talked about it a few videos ago uh, where you get some alien bubbles on the emulsion. 
This one was not nearly as bad as some of the ones I've had in the past, maybe because my rimjet remover process is at room temperature now and not 100 degrees. Um, but let me show you a very quick clip of what I'm talking about because I cropped the image from the original scan to kind of take out the bulk of the edges. But let me crop, let me, let me show you an uncrop, just a couple seconds of uncrop, and you'll see what I mean right on the perforation side. Here it is. You see what I mean? I, I think we were on the verge of not being able to get a good clean image out of this. So I, th I think it was probably very poorly stored. Uh, and due to the age of the film, we got what we got. Once again, if you like stuff like this, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. And do like my second cousin's twin sister-in-law's mother's next door neighbor used to always tell me. Subscribe. It's that simple. Hit the little subscribe button. You probably not be upset at yourself for doing it. And until the very next time that I see every single one of you wonderful people. Not a single head bob. I'll see you on the next go around.